Hello, in this lecture we'll be taking a look at the first in, first out inventory method. At the end of this lecture we will be able to explain the inventory process under the first in, first out method, calculate inventory cost flows using first in, first out, record journal entries related to inventory cost flows using first in, first out, explain the effects of journal entries on accounts on the trial balance using first in, first out method. So first we're going to start with our beginning balance and we're going to take a look at it in terms of context within the trial balance. So if we look at the trial balance we can see that the inventory account is here and we can see that we have a debit balance of 5000 in it. If we wanted to have more detail about that $5000 within inventory we could look at the general ledger but that would give us generally more detail by date. It would show us the transactions by date. So know that any account here we can of course look at the general ledger to see more detail by date but in case of inventory we want to see more detail in something other than just date we want to see detail in terms of units so when we do that we're going to need another type of worksheet up here that will give us how many units we have on hand and what the cost of those units are and this assumption what we're going to assume is that we have basically one type of unit in this assumption as of now and the units are all the same so they're homogeneous in nature they're the same in nature and the problem arises in that even if a unit is the same in nature even if we're buying the same unit and then selling it then the price of that unit will go up over time or it'll change over time oftentimes and so even though we have the same unit there we need to know how are we going to cost that unit how are we going to price that unit? In this case, we're going to start off with 100 units. We're going to say that they cost $50. That's how much we paid for it. And therefore, uh, we have that's the backup for the $500,000. $5, so we have $5,000 on the trial balance, which is backed up by our worksheet. We can see up here that we have the assets being in green, our debit balance accounts. We have the liability accounts as a credit balance account represented by the brackets. Capital is a credit balance account represented by the brackets. And then we have no income yet and we have expenses. Therefore, we have a loss, meaning income is zero and we have expense of 500 plus 300 plus the 9920, giving us a loss of 10,720. So then we are going to assume that we purchase 400 units at $55. So note, this is where we're starting off at again before this activity. And we had units before costing $50. And we're going to assume a normal increase in price. So now the price of the units that we are buying that we will later sell now cost $55. And over time, that's usually what's going to happen. We're going to assume that prices go up over time, all else equal. There could be times when price goes down for other things that are being done to the cost of the things we are purchasing but if all else is equal prices will go up just due to inflation usually so we're going to take that normal assumption that prices are going to increase and so then the question is what are we going to uh, do to our worksheet how are we going to record this within our worksheet now that we have units costing different amounts in terms of the journal entry we'll see how we're going to journal entry this and record this transaction on the trial balance so if we take a look at our worksheet then, we're going to put this new 400 units in the purchasing area. So I'm going to put in the purchasing three columns that we got another 400 units. And now they cost $55, which of course is greater than they, what they used to cost, which was only 50. The 400 times the 55 is $22,000. Now what we want to do is have all of our uh, units uh, as of under this date. So in this box, I want to have all of our units as of this time therefore what we're going to do is this original layer i'm just going to bring down notice that we just brought down that layer 100 units at 55 gives us the 5000 that's what we currently have then we just brought over this layer now we have another layer costing 400 units well they don't cost they are 400 units and they cost 55 dollars for 22000 the 5,000 plus the 22,000 equals the 27. That's what should be on our trial balance after we record the purchase transaction. So let's see what the journal entry would look like. Remember that we started off with 5,000 units, uh, $5,000, which was represented by 100 units at $50. 
And now the journal entry is fairly straightforward. We paid what we paid. There's no estimate in the journal entry, meaning we paid $22,000 for these 400 units. Therefore, the inventory is going to go up by 22,000 inventory is a debit balance the way we make it go up or make anything go up is we do the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so we debit the 22,000 we're going to credit uh accounts payable in this case assuming that we did not pay cash that we paid for it on account accounts payable is of course a credit balance has has a credit balance we're going to do the same thing to it to make it go up in the credit direction and therefore it goes up to the 43,150. So if we post that out, then the inventory went up by 22,000 to 27, which matches our worksheet and the accounts payable will go up as well. There's no effect on net income because neither of the revenue or expense accounts is here are being affected. The expense account of cost of goods sold will be affected when we sell the inventory. All right. So then on nine, on three, nine, we sold 420 units of the inventory so this is where we left off at last time where we had 27,000 units and we had the 27 27,000 dollars represented by 100 units at $50 and 400 units at $55 giving us the 27,000 dollars on our trial balance now the question being what will be the cost of these units that we're going to sell and um, we have two choices it's going to cost the $50 or it will cost the $55. And in this case, using the first in, first out method, we're going to assume that we sold the first ones in, first out. That would mean the 100 units at $50 would be the ones that we sold first in this case. So if we were going to do that in terms of our worksheet, then we're going to put that in the cost of good uh, sold or the cost of merchandise column. These three columns here will represent the cost of the merchandise we sold. Now you might be saying, well, where does this $85 work into our calculation up here? Note that the $85 is what we sell it for. It's not what we bought it for. And this worksheet up here all represents what we bought it for, not the sales price. This $85 will take come into play when we record the sale. But right now we're working on the cost of the sale. And the cost of the sale represents what we bought it for, which in this case will be either the $50 or the $55. And, of course, we just said that the first layer is what we're going to sell first. So remember, we're really working in this box right here. I want to have all of our activity in this new box under this date range. And, therefore, we're going to say that of this 100 units, we sold all of those 100 at $50. So there's the 5,000. In order to get to the 420 units here, we would need another 320 units to sell we must have sold those out of the 400 units at $55. So that means that 320 units at 55. That's what we sold. So the 5,000 plus the 17.6 is the cost of the goods that we sold. Then what do we have left after that happens? Well, of this layer, we sold 100 units of them. Therefore, 100 minus 100 is zero. We have zero units left at 50. That means we have a dollar amount of zero, zero times 50. Of the 400, we sold 320, meaning we have 80 left. 80 minus, the, I mean, 80 times the 55 unit cost is 4,400. Therefore, we have a dollar amount of 4,400. If we look at the journal entries related to this, we actually have two journal entries. And one of the things that are problematic when we start focusing on the cost worksheet is that we almost forget about the first, <laughs> the first journal entry that is the major journal entry that we do every time in, including in service industries that don't have inventory and that is to record the sales price so how do we record the sales price well if we sold it on account which i'm going to assume here instead of getting cash we're going to debit accounts receivable because accounts receivable is a debit balance we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case is another debit and we're going to credit uh, revenue or income or sales whatever we're calling that we would generally call it sales if we're talking about selling stuff so sales has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing, which in this case is a credit. This journal entry is going to be the same for uh, whether we're a service company or whether we sell goods in terms of inventory. How do we calculate the amount? It would be the 420 times the $85. And note that this is the amount that the consumer would see 
If we go to the grocery store, we see the sales price. We see how much it's being sold for times how much we buy it for. What we do not see when we run through this stuff through the check register is, of course, the cost. That's not going to be on, on the sticker. <laughs> so then we're, we're going to record the cost from our worksheet. And the cost of goods sold means that the inventory must go down. And so we have the 27000 in inventory. We paid 22000 uh, uh for I mean I'm sorry yeah we paid the 176 plus the 5 or the 226 in this case for it therefore the inventory must go down how do we make something go down we do the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so note that the inventory is on the bottom we have a credit bringing the 27 down to the 44 which matches our worksheet here the other side of it being the cost of goods sold so the cost of goods sold is the expense related to the inventory being consumed in order to generate revenue in the same time period in accordance with the matching principle. Expenses all have debit balances. We make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So that would be a debit here. Note what happens to net income. It actually goes up, meaning this isn't a loss. It's a credit in this worksheet. Credits are good on the income statement in that the revenue minus the expenses means that we have a credit, meaning the revenue is winning by 2380. So the effect on the income statement of this transaction is 3720 revenue less the cost of goods sold, the expense of 226. Therefore, it net income went up by 13100. Also note that this journal entry that we're looking at here, we're representing it as two journal entries, even though they happen at the same time. It could be represented with one journal entry and, and it could rep be represented with the two debits on tops and the two credits on the bottom, but it is easier for us to look at it as two separate journal entries and whatever is best for you to interpret the journal entry and see what is going on is, in my opinion, the best form to put the journal entry in. So that's why we're generally going to represent it as two separate journal entries in this case. We are now able to explain the inventory process under FIFO. Calculate inventory cost flows using FIFO. Uh, record journal entries related to inventory cost flows using FIFO. Explain the effects of journal entries to accounts on the trial balance using FIFO.